Welcome to Faith Assembly. As we count down to our worship celebration, we're here to celebrate a few of the amazing things God is doing here and tell you about our church. We also have online viewing options where we live stream every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you're new to Faith Assembly, we invite you to grab a Connect card and take it to your First Impressions team at the conclusion of the service. We want to meet you and give you a gift. To be encouraged and get weekly updates about our church, follow us on Instagram at MyFaithAG, like our Faith Assembly Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching Faith Assembly. There are so many amazing things that happen here on a weekly basis, starting with our Sunday morning celebrations across multiple locations, where we come together to celebrate everything God has done and will do in our lives. One of the best ways to get connected is to join one of our connect groups. Connect groups provide a way for people to grow in Christ and fellowship with other believers. To view a full list of our connect groups, visit faith-assembly.org slash connect groups or visit the Welcome Center in the lobby. If you have kids in your family, we encourage you to check out Faith Kids. Faith Kids meet every Sunday at all locations during our worship celebrations. At Faith Kids, we are passionate about creating an environment where kids can experience God in a way that they will never forget. Parents have the freedom to worship in the main service while their kids are safe and secure while praising God, meeting new friends, and learning about God's Word. For all middle and high school students, we have Faith Youth where we are creating a welcoming and exciting atmosphere where students can grow in their love for Jesus and each other. Faith Youth meets every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Next Gen Space at the Winterval Campus, where they are taught the Bible in a relevant and exciting way and can connect with other students their age. A shuttle is provided each week at our Chocowinity Campus. For more information, you can visit the Faith Youth website at faith-assembly.org slash faithyouth and follow along on our Instagram and TikTok at underscore faithyouth, like our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are 18 to 25, we would like to invite you to Pulse Young Adults. We meet on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. for an awesome time of connecting with other young adults and experiencing a challenging message. To stay connected or to learn more, follow us on our Instagram page at Pulse Young Adults and like our Facebook page. Women and teen girls, Faith Women is for you. We have so many opportunities to get connected and be a part of this awesome community. Power up parties, growth groups, and our annual gather conference in September. To stay connected with Faith Women, join the Faith Women Facebook group. And for the guys, we have Faith Men. Faith men are challenged to live out God's view of manhood and are empowered to be better husbands, fathers, and leaders. We have several opportunities to get connected through Bible studies and connection points. To stay connected, be sure to join the Faith Men Facebook group. Wednesday nights at Faith Assembly Winterville are for the whole family. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for a variety of activities that will help you grow in your walk with Jesus. Your kids will have a blast in Faith Kids every Wednesday as they build their relationship with Christ in a variety of fun and exciting ways. Fun games, awesome lessons taught in a kid-friendly way, and movie nights enable each child to grow socially as well as spiritually. For all middle and high school students, each midweek is fresh and exciting as we offer a range of experiences, including Bible studies, watch parties, and midweek madness hangouts that allow students to grow deeper in friendships and in God's Word. And for the adults, we have midweek Bible study. During this time, you will be challenged with relevant topics and thought-provoking ideas that you can use in your everyday life. Once a month, we come together to worship Jesus and seek his presence in prayer during our Unite prayer and worship services that streamed across all locations. We encourage each of you to join us for this powerful time together. Wish that you could rewatch that worship experience from this past week? You actually can. Visit our YouTube channel or download the Faith Assembly Church Center app to access it at any time throughout your week. Thank you for joining us at Faith Assembly. We hope that you are blessed and encouraged by our service today. Welcome home.
Welcome to Faith Assembly. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning for church. If you're new with us, we encourage you to text new guest to 97,000 or fill out a connect card and taking that card to the welcome desk in the lobby after service to receive a free gift and more information about life here at Faith. Check out a couple of these announcements. Our growth group starts on August the 29th and it runs September 5th and September 12th. Three weeks doing a book by Johnny Parker, 10X Better Man. The faith men will be leading this growth group. And then September 19th, as I promised last week, our guest speaker for our stakeout is none other than Hall of Fame championship wrestler Nikita Koloff. Register at faith-assembly.org for the growth group and also for our stakeout. More information is coming in the next few weeks. See you there. Hey guys, are you new here at Faith Assembly? Well, we have a great opportunity for you to get plugged in to what life is like here. We will be having our new people party at all of our locations. This is a great way to obtain more information about the mission and the vision, as well as the various ministries we have at Faith Assembly Church. Our Faith Youth and Pulse Young Adults Pool Party is coming up. This is a time where all of our rising sixth graders will join Faith Youth, and our graduating seniors will now join us at Pulse Young Adults and we cannot wait. It's gonna be a great time on Sunday, August 13th from 7 to 9 p.m. This event is completely free and it's got two hours of pool time, free food, and a bunch of fun as we meet all of our brand new friends, right? Right. <laughs> hey, Faith Women, as you know, Gather Your Girls Weekend has moved to March 2024. With that said, we are not going to forsake the tribe in the month of September. On September the 15th, we are having our one-time event, Horizon. It's going to be a great night. Doors open at 6, event kicks off at 6.30. There's going to be a fun time with the tribe, speaker, worship. You're going to hear about how the horizon is so bright for you as an individual and for faith women. I encourage you to get registered. Registration is open and bring a friend. It's for girls ages 13 and up, and I will see you there. Hey, guys, where are all my leaders at? We have an opportunity for you to be a part of a vital ministry here at Faith Assembly Church and being a Connect Group leader. All current and potential Connect Group leaders will be meeting on August 20th following our second service in our Next Gen Sanctuary. A meal and child care will be provided as we discuss the mission and vision of Connect Groups for the upcoming year. To sign up, please visit faith-assembly.org slash events. Hey everybody, we are so excited to invite you to our next Unite Prayer and Worship Emphasis Night. It's happening on August 9th at all our locations. Bring your family and we hope to see you there. Hey guys, we are so excited about what God is doing in our church through water baptisms. And if you want to take the next step in your faith in public declaration by being baptized, we want to invite you to sign up at faith-assembly.org for our next one on August 20th. We can't wait to have you a part of what God is doing. Good morning, Faith Assembly Church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen, amen. Look, Pastor Steve sends his love and uh, wants you to know that he and Pastor Lisa are excited to be back. They're on their way back from Columbus, Ohio today, and they want to say that they miss you, but they love you. And uh, I want you to be encouraged this morning, and I want you to take 
the opportunity, if you have not, to join us this Wednesday night. Make plans for this Wednesday night for our Unite Prayer and Worship Night. If you've not been, you are missing a powerful time in the presence of the Lord. So come and join us. Pastor Steve will be back sharing a brief word, and we get together, joining together in prayer and worship with one another. So we want you to come to that. So good to see each and every one of you this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of James. I'll be taking my text from the book of James in the first chapter. Um, and I want to speak to you this morning of a topic that may be difficult for some. I want to speak to you that it, it may be difficult for some, but to others it may be a little easier, and that topic is the follow-through. Has anybody ever had somebody say that they were going to follow through something, but in the end it didn't happen? How disappointed were you when you expected that person to follow through on what they said they were going to do, but it never happened? You see, I, I believe that we are a people that look forward to what is next. Anybody look forward to what's next? Well, I, I am anticipating something bigger and better all the time. Not that I'm not grateful for what I already have, but I'm looking forward to something bigger and better, for something greater than what I already have. Did, maybe you're in the same boat. Maybe you calculated, you know... What, what your raise was this year and you planned it out for the next five years and said, that's where I'll be. Maybe, maybe you just like to plan and to calculate. You like to have a vision of where you want to go. Well, my wife will tell you that I greatly anticipate the next thing. This is especially true when it comes to my vacation time. Okay? I, I love my vacation. Something about getting away in the mountains, the, in a mountain stream, my, my feet in the sand at the beach, it's something about just relaxing with my family, seeing my kids play, seeing them fight and fuss over toys, uh, seeing my wife having a good time. It means so much to me to have my vacation time. I've been known actually even on more than one occasion to plan the next trip before I even get home from the trip that I'm currently on. That's, that's how much it means to me, right? I like to plan. I like to have a vision for where I'm going. Why? Because that is what is near and dear to my heart. That means a lot to me that I get to spend quality time with my kids, with my family, and I get to love on them and cherish them. So I look forward to that. I look forward to the next thing. And that's what a vision is. A vision is a goal that is in the distance. A vision is a goal that is in the distance, and we have heard a, a great and phenomenal vision from Pastor Steve and Pastor Lisa in the last year that has come to fruition, and it is continuing to come to fruition. But I want you to know that vision is not something that you only see with your eyes, but a lot of times vision is something that you see and you hear within your heart. You know, Pastor Steve and Pastor Lisa do an extraordinary job of leading this church in, in, in a vision. And God spoke to Pastor Steve last year about expanding Faith Assembly to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And the vision that was once ago in the distance is now a reality in front of us. He gave the comparison of seeing the mountains in the distance. You know, everybody, any, anybody ever been to the Smoky Mountains? You can see the... When you, when you get closer to the mountains, you can see the outline. And then as you go a little closer and a little closer, the vision of the mountains becomes a little bit clearer and a little bit clearer the further you go. You can see them, but the clarity of how to accomplish what God has placed on your heart doesn't always come with the vision. The clarity does not always come with the vision. If it did, then why would we need faith, right? Right? Why would we need faith to step out and do what God says do if we already knew the plan in which we were to walk in? As you grow, draw closer to God, that the vision becomes clearer and clearer. And oftentimes the vision part is not the difficult 
is not difficult, but the act to accomplish it can be. You can hear God and, and know His voice. You can hear Him all day long. However, there must be action in order to move you forward. There must be follow-through in order to accomplish the vision that God has placed within your own heart spiritually. We can't just say, Lord, I have a vision from you, and I thank you for the vision. Lord, I have a plan, and we can't just sit on the plan. We can't just sit on the vision, but we have to act and follow through with what God has given us. To bring you closer to what God has put on your heart to do, you must act. In James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, the word says this. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves, for if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. You see, church, it is not enough just to act the part. It is not enough just to hear the vision. It is not enough just to hear the plan and, and write down the plan, but we must take action. We have to live it out day by day in faith. People know when you're genuine, right? And people can call out a fraud in a minute. But more importantly, God knows when you are genuine, and God knows when you are a fraud, and that is really the only thing that matters. And when we move in our, our plan of our vision, we don't move just to move. We don't move just because. There must be a destination, and there must be a purpose for our movement, or we will come to a screeching halt. If there is no purpose, if there is no drive, if there is no ambition behind the vision, you will not accomplish anything. If there is no purpose, no drive or ambition behind the, mission, the, the vision, you will not accomplish anything. I was reminded of a story of a, the drowning man. Maybe you've heard of it before. Maybe you haven't. And it goes something like this, that there was a hurricane that came by and a man got stranded on the rooftop. And a rowboat comes by and he says, jump in, man, I can save you. He said, no thanks, I have faith. I've already asked God that, and he's going to save me, but thank you. He rows on and then a motorboat comes by and he says, jump in, man, I can save you. He said, I really appreciate it, but I have faith that God is going to save me. Scratching his head, he drives away. The waters are constantly rising, even a little higher, and now you can barely see the rooftop. Finally, a helicopter comes by, lowers down a basket, and he says, jump in, man, I can save you. He said, I really appreciate it, but I know I have faith that God is going to save me. Well, the waters continue to rise, and eventually the man drowns. And he gets to heaven, and he asks the Lord. He said, Lord, I had faith in you that you were going to save me, and you let me down. And to which God replied, I sent you a rowboat, a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more did you expect? I realize the story may be a little exaggerated this morning, but, but maybe it's not. Maybe God has been speaking to you very directly, but you have yet to move in your specific situation. Sometimes we can, on, we can be obedient only to the point that our obedience serves our own interests. Sometimes we can only be sometimes we're obedient only to the point that it serves our own interests. You know, and our obedience should not be conditional on our circumstances. The Bible says that obedience is greater than sacrifice. It, it, is, it is a great and valuable thing to be obedient. 
But I want to tell you this morning that you will sometimes have to sacrifice through your obedience. Abraham, when he went up to the mountain to sacrifice his own son, the Bible called him his only son because Ishmael had been taken away, been sent away. He gave, gave his only son as a sacrifice to God because he was obedient. When Hannah took Samuel to the temple for God's service, it must have been a sacrifice. Three or four year old little boy, I can't imagine dropping my little girl off at the temple because I promised you three years ago, if you gave me this child, God, I would give him back to you. I can't imagine letting that part of me go. But it was a sacrifice, but she was obedient in her sacrifice so Samuel could fulfill the work of the Lord. Jesus, the most obedient of all, was obedient to the Father through the sacrifice of himself for us on the cross for our sin. All of these examples, they followed through obedience because of the vision that was before them. The greater the vision, the greater the follow-through. The greater the vision, the greater the follow-through. The greater the vision, the greater the plan, the greater the execution. The greater normally the faith it takes. We must follow through to the vision and the plan that God has set before us in our heart. Many people talk about an exuberant vision and many have a fantastic plan. But when we really take a step and look back, how many of us have great execution? There's an old saying that goes, when everything is said and done, there's a whole lot more said than gets done. But I want to be able to follow through with what God has given me as a vision and as a plan. I want to follow through with the things that I have planned. When, when you follow through with your plan, you execute the vision that was once just a thought. You execute the vision that was once a, a thought, and you make a dream a reality. You may think, well, that sounds a little more motivational than spiritual. Well, listen to what Acts 2 and 17 says. It says, In the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your son and your daughter shall pros prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Now, I believe that Faith Assembly Church has young men that see visions, and I believe that we have older men that dream dreams, and all we have to do is execute the vision that God has already put in front of us. We already have, we only have, only thing we have to do is take what God already says we have. Take action. We must follow through on God's promises. I'm reminded of when the Israelites were at the brink of going into Canaan, into the promised land. And, and he sent out 12 spies to go and view the land, and 12 of them went out for 40 days, and they all came back. And Joshua and Caleb were the only two that gave a good report and said, God said we could take the land, and we are going to take the land. But the ten, the majority said, that we can't do it. We can't do it. There's giants out there. There's enemies on every side. The, 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 pro, the, the field is bountiful and it's beautiful, but we will surely get massacred if we try to take the land. But Joshua and Caleb stood fast on what God promised them, and that was to go and possess the land. And we must go and possess the land with, with our gifts, with our talents, with the anointing that God has blessed you with. You must follow through with the promises of God on your life today. Amen. It's time for us to take action we have come to a day and a time where we are just okay with settling. We are okay with just getting by. And why is that? Because we are a people that like comfort. We like to be in a comfortable position, a comfortable place. We don't like to be uncomfortable. If I can just turn on Netflix when I get home and be comfortable, I'll be all right. But God is calling us to do more than that. You know, 
spiritually, when you get comfortable, it's a dangerous place to be. It is a very dangerous place to be when you get comfortable spiritually. When you become stagnant, when you're not moving, when we hear stagnant, we think of stagnant water, right? Water that does not move, water that does not have a continuous flow. But with no movement and aeration, stagnant water can become a prime breeding ground for bacteria. And left untreated, that stagnant water often becomes home for dangerous diseases and pathogens. And I'm scared that if we do the same thing within our spiritual walk, that our hearts will become cold and we will start to grow a bacteria and a fungus that if it left unchecked, it will overtake us all for the sake of comfort. But we must not settle because he has called us more than just to settle. He has called us to follow through because what is in front of us is far greater than what is behind us. And if we could see the promise, if, we could, if I could see where I was then compared to where I am now, I would have never doubted God in the first place. If I could see the provisions and the blessings of God, if you would only have showed me that back then, but then I wouldn't have grown in my faith. I had to take action and follow through in order to grow in that faith. Yes, it is going to take work. Yes, it is going to take dedication. It will even take patience, but we cannot settle because the promised land Canaan is right on the other side. Now, Pastor Steve said a couple weeks ago, and I want to reiterate what he said, and I, because I know it's true, that everybody likes to wait. Everybody likes to wait, right? But we cannot settle in our patience. If God is telling you to do something, then follow through with what God is telling you to do. My wife and I were in a place in our life several years ago when we were asking God to move in a specific situation in our life. And when we look back on it, we actually realized it was God saying it was our turn. Now, let me just, as a disclaimer real quick, please don't take this example that I'm giving you and say, well, Pastor Jared said move, so we did, and not be back next Sunday at Faith Assembly Church, okay? Because we love you, and we want you here. We're not telling you to move there, but spiritually, we pray like the man on the roof. God, move in our situation. God, move in our situation. We wanted God to move so much in our situation, it was crazy. Anybody ever put a timeline up on, on God? Not really on God, but like put a timeline out there, say, all right, God, if you don't move by this time, then I'll know. And then we kind of extend it a little bit. Okay, God, if you don't move by this time, then we'll really know. We look back and we realize that God was telling us it was our turn to move. It was our time to follow through with what we really already knew in our heart. You know, sometimes it is difficult to leave something that is comfortable and something that you are used to. For some of us, it's difficult to leave our bed in the morning. That's comfortable. That's something we're used to. You know, it doesn't take much faith to stay in the boat. But it takes a whole lot of faith to step out of the boat, especially when you don't know how deep the water is. So where does God want us spiritually? I know he doesn't want us just writing down the vision and writing down the plan, but he wants us to execute what he has given us in our hearts. He doesn't just want you thinking about it. He doesn't want you just planning it. He wants you to execute it. Whenever we been to, begin to execute a vision, our faith grows. God never gives us a vision that we can do without faith. God never gives us a vision that we can do without faith. It may be scary at times. Oh, it, it, it may be 
torment at times. You may not know how it's all going to work out, and you may not know how it's all going to fall into place, but as long as you hold the hand of the Master, it will be okay. Everybody, I want you to take a second and look where you are right now, not physically, but spiritually. Look where you are right now and compare it to where you came from. Now, I don't want you to answer this out loud because this may be different for some people. You may have different answers here. But is it better or is it worse from where you came from? Because it could be both. It could be either. We, sometimes we get in church and we're like, yes, my life is blessed. I'm, I'm better than what I used to be. But if, in all reality, sometimes life happens. Sometimes life happens, right? So take a look spiritually and, and, and evaluate where you are. Whatever your answer is today, I can assure you that it can be better if you're pursuing and following through with an act of faith in the Father of where He wants you to be. Look, God has been speaking to your heart about doing more, serving in a greater capacity, serving on our First Impressions team, serving as a Connect Group leader, maybe serving in our kids' ministry. Go and follow through with what God has put on your heart to do. Follow through with what God is speaking to you. He's been telling you to start the business. Go and follow through with what God is telling you to do. Maybe God has been calling you to give more to our kingdom builders. He's been speaking to you about holding on to what actually is already His. Go ahead and follow through and give abundantly. Where does God want you to be spiritually? Are you in the right relationship? Do we need to follow through with surrender? Are there things that God has been telling you to give up that you just haven't let go of yet? Can I tell you today that God can do more with your surrender and obedience than He can do with your control? God can do more with your surrender and your obedience than He can your control. But sometimes it takes action. Sometimes it takes obedience. Sometimes it takes follow through to see the blessings and the fruition of God come forth in your life. You say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't prove it. Okay. In the Old Testament, and I'll get to the New Testament in just a minute, but in the Old Testament there was a war hero by the man by the name of Naaman Naaman was a powerful general and he was struck with a skin disease called leprosy that was normally a painful long death sentence Naaman was told to go see the prophet Elisha and a big general in the army comes to Elisha, and Elisha sends out his assistant to greet him. And he says, tell him to go wash in the river seven times. Wash in the dirty river seven times. Naaman, being the big star general that he was, said, I'm, I'm too big for that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But a good thing he had some good advisors beside him because they convinced him to go wash in the river seven times. And when Naaman came out that seventh time, he was cleansed of the leprosy. But it took action in order to do that. It took follow through. The poor widow that had had nothing she and her son were or that they were about to die, they had no food. They had to go and collect jars from their neighbors, from their friends. Can you imagine how humiliating that is to collect jar, empty jars and vessels from your neighbor and say, I, I just need them just for a little bit. So she went and collected the jars as an act of faith. And God blessed her when those jars would fill with oil to the brim. 
And as soon, the, the oil never stopped flowing until the last vessel was filled. When Jesus was passing through and everybody was telling him to be quiet, blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus. He saw the opportunity. He saw, he saw the vision, though not with his eyes, it was with his heart. He heard Jesus coming by, and then he had to make a decision what he was going to do. Was he going to listen to the naysayers that said, be quiet, he's busy. No, the master is coming by. I'm going to execute the plan. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And as Jesus came by, he healed his blinded eyes because he took action. The woman with the issue of blood for many years knew that Jesus was coming by and all she had to do was take action and touch the hem of his garment to be healed. Probably the best set of friends that we ever read about in the Bible are those of the one of the paralytic man that was lowered down. Can you imagine? Our friend is paralyzed. Jesus is in the city. We're going to make it happen for you, buddy. We're going to cut a stranger's roof, okay? I don't know if he's got insurance. But I know that if we can get you in there, I know if, if we can follow through in faith, he is going to bless you because of the follow-through. And as the four men lifted their friend down lower, and, they, and Jesus saw the act of faith in their follow-through, he said, take up your bed and walk. And he was no longer paralyzed because he followed through with the blessing. He followed through. Look, all these miracles and these blessings are great examples of how to follow through. But the greatest miracle is that which is available to us all. The greatest follow-through we could ever participate in is the miracle of being able to know God personally. Although we might wish to do amazing miracles for God, we should instead focus on developing a relationship with Him. When we focus on the relationship, the guidance will come. The closer we are to God, the more in tune we are to His will. The more time I spend with my wife, the more I know about her, the more I know her tendencies, the more I know when she puts that tone in her voice, when I really need to get up and do what she says do. Some of you married folks know what I'm talking about. But if we have that same relationship with God, when God speaks to our heart and gives us a vision and gives us a plan, we will know when we really need to take action. We will not question when we need to follow through. The same thing with my children. The more time I spend with them, the more I know them, the more I know their tendencies, the more I know what makes them happy or sad I know what cry my babies are crying I know when the cry is excitement I know when that cry is hurt I know when the cry is aggravation because of the relationship and the time that I have spent with them can I tell you today that God is a relational God we see him all and mighty and all powerful and he is that and he is so much more. But if we cast religion aside for a moment, God is a father. Truly, God is not just someone who sits in heaven demanding judgment to earth. No, he is a father that wants you to have a real and genuine relationship with him. See, we can get our thoughts misconfigured sometimes, I think, because of the vastness of God and who He is, and we really forget that He is relational. We come to church, and we see a big production, we see a big show, and we forget that God, yes, God is in this, but more importantly, God is in this. I 
I'm reminded of when God met Elijah up on the mountain. Elijah had just defeated the prophets of Baal in a monumental showdown. He had just seen fire. He had prayed fire down from heaven. God consumed the altar. He, he cursed the prophets of Baal. He, God killed them because of his obedience. And now we see Elijah running for his life, scared because Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you. To the point where he's hiding in a cave. And in that moment, Elijah had a moment of self-pity. He said, Lord, I'm the only one that's following you. Anybody ever been there? Feels like I'm the only one, God. But God met Elijah on the mountain. And God passed by and a windstorm came. The windstorm was so strong that it tore rocks down from the mountain. Then an earthquake came, then the fire came. But God was not in those. Then after the fire, there was a gentle whisper. Some of you today have been hearing the gentle whisper. And you're expecting an earthquake. You're expecting a mountain of a vision or a mountain of of direction but all along God has been speaking to your heart in a gentle whisper and Elijah knew like most of us here do today that that whisper was God's voice God speaks more frequently in persistent whispers than he does in loud and boisterous shouts I'm all for a good Pentecostal service I'm all for it I love it it's, it's rejuvenating. I can get in there and shout with the rest of them. I love it. But more frequently, God speaks to your heart when you are humbled and you're just sitting there in His presence. To look for God only in productions and church and once a year events, they're all good. I will say that they are all good and we want you to be a part of that. But to look for God only in these things, we may miss Him because He's often fine, gently whispering to your humble heart. So let's step back from the noise. Let's step back from the activity of our busy life and listen humbly and quietly for His guidance. It may come when you least expect it everybody would stand this morning with me. Where does God want you to be? I know that God wants you to follow through. I know that God wants you to take that step of faith out of the boat even when you don't know how deep the water is. I know that God will sometimes put us in uncomfortable situations, but it is in order to grow our faith even greater than it could ever be. So where does God want you to be? First and foremost, He wants you to be in a personal relationship with Him. He wants you to follow through with the commitment to Him first surrendering it all your life to him follow through with a commitment to Jesus today secondly he wants you to surrender what you've been carrying he wants you to follow through and surrender many of us may be Christians here today but we're holding on to something that we should have let go a long time ago, and it's time for us to follow through in our surrender to Christ. Maybe that means giving the burdens that you've been holding on to over to Him. Maybe that means the relationship you've been holding on to needs to be let go. Maybe that even means reconciling with a family member that years ago you had a disagreement with. And it's time to follow through in that surrender 
the addictions, follow through in the surrender. Lastly, I believe that God wants you to follow through in an active pursuit of Him. He wants you to be in pursuit of Him. Spending time with the Father, whatever that looks like to you. Is it serving at the soup kitchen? Is it fostering that child that God has put on your heart? Is it spending more time in the Word? Is it, is it serving in your local church or your community? He wants you in an active pursuit of Him. In just a moment, our worship team will begin to sing. And if that's any three things this morning that you can say, I align with that. If you say that I need to surrender in my commitment to Jesus Christ, I want to meet you down here at the front, right here in the center, if that's you, in just a few moments. If that's you that says, I need to surrender some things, some baggage that I've carried on too long, and now it's time for me to follow through and surrender, then I want you down here at the altar praying. We want to pray with you as you follow through in that surrender. Lastly, you need to follow through in that active, active pursuit of God. I want you to come down and find a place and follow through in that active pursuit of Him today. If that's you, any of th three of those things this morning, as our praise team begins to worship, would you come so we can pray with you today? Would you come? If that's you this morning. joining us this morning for Faith Assembly Online. We hope the message today encouraged and inspired you. If you'd like to be a part of what's happening at Faith Assembly, we invite you to share this video and like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow our Instagram. You can invest in what's happening by giving online at faith-assembly.org give or by downloading the Church Center app. We'll see you right here next Sunday at 9 a.m. or 1045. Be blessed and have a Jesus-filled week.